Hello, Kyle here. I'm going to review the fifth episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which just dropped today. As you know, I've been watching this show. I have mostly enjoyed it. The first three episodes I pretty much enjoyed. The third episode I had some issues with, but the fourth episode I was really let down by. So this episode was a very crucial episode because it was supposed to be the episode that would pick up from the fourth episode and hopefully renew my faith in this series. I think, I will say, I really did love this episode, but it does have many criticisms and the the flaws in this episode still kind of, um, I think, prevent this series as a whole from ending up to be what I thought it would be, and it's, I'm still, I think, let down by this series. I'm still, you know, waiting for the final episode, but just the traje the trajectory of this all, it's, it's not as, I think, entertaining as I hoped it would be. First off, I will go off with my criticism. So, my main criticism, really, and it's as much as, you know, some might say it's a minor criticism, I think it's a very important criticism. And it's the music. It's, you don't have to be someone that has never watched Star Wars. You're like, you don't have to be someone that is like a massive fan of Star Wars to know how important the Star Wars music is. People know the Star Wars music without even seeing Star Wars. That is how ingrained the music of Star Wars is in the pop culture zeitgeist. In the case of this series, they have decided in the five episodes of this show not to use any Star Wars music from any of the movies, from any of the shows, the only hint, I think, I, I, and I don't even know if this is real, because I think I heard a hint of the Imperial March in this new episode, but I am not even sure if that's true, because there are variations that, you know, could have been, um, played upon. The problem is, you have Darth Vader, and Darth Vader is most known for his Imperial March theme. The, I mean, I don't even feel like singing it, but you know, the do 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 and I don't know if I heard it today, because like, I, I may have, but... I sure as hell didn't hear it whenever Darth Vader was on screen in this show. And as a fan of Star Wars and as a, a fan of the music of Star Wars, I am massively let down by the fact that we have not heard any themes, especially when we have such familiar characters. We have not heard Princess Leia's theme. We have not heard Luke's theme. We have not heard the iconic like Jedi music Star Wars themes of the past the only theme that this show seems to be um, particular about is the new Obi-Wan Kenobi theme that John Williams has composed for this series but aside from that there are really no themes from prior Star Wars movies or shows that are being used in this series and I am very disappointed because I think the themes are just as important as the characters and when I see Darth Vader in this show and when I do not hear the Imperial March with when Darth Vader's on screen it does not feel like the same character to me it does not feel like Darth Vader just like if you heard you know the theme of Yoda and Yoda wasn't on screen like if you didn't hear the theme of Yoda when Yoda was on screen it would not feel like Yoda it just music is so important in Star Wars and I feel like they have 
not done the best job with the music in the show because I, I really I need to hear the themes. It might sound like a minor complaint, but I think it is a valid one given that it is Star Wars. Um, um, as I said, there may have been the hint of an Imperial March, but like the hint. This is, we have Darth Vader in this show. We haven't like seen Darth Vader in this capacity. I mean, since the prequels, but really since you know the original trilogy. Sure, we got a little bit of him in Rogue One, where we also heard the theme, but it it's like this is aside from you know Rebels and um, even Jedi Fallen Order, the video game. I, I want to hear the Darth Vader theme, the Imperial March. When we see Darth Vader on screen. Um, I want to hear Princess Leia's theme. When we see Princess Leia in this show. When she's one of the main characters of this series. Um, and what, what's also frustrating to me is you can be like. Oh no, well this is before the original trilogy. So they don't have their themes yet. No, in Revenge of the Sith. They play Darth Vader's theme. And they played Princess Leia's theme. So don't tell me that those themes aren't there yet. Because they have played them before. With that being said, <laughs> um, I really do enjoy the episode. I like the... Um, I think the performances have ranged in quality but I will say that Ewan McGregor is still giving it his all as Obi-Wan I very I see I've heard a lot of criticisms with Moses Ingram's performance as Reva I actually I think I really do like it I don't think I like it as much as I did when I first watched the show I think that lately especially I think it was the last episode I didn't feel like her performance as Reva was as strong as it was in the first couple episodes this episode, I think she was getting back to, I think, what I really liked about Reva. She is also very intense, but at the same time, there is a lot of hidden layers in her character. And that's where the show explores a lot of those hidden layers of Reva. It explores what happened in her past in this episode, which I found to be pretty predictable. But I think it... it it gives us a little more of a, you know, connection to her character. Um, Princess Leia is in this episode. Once again, I don't know how I feel about her inclusion in the series. She's basically the entire episode trying to open the, the, what are they called? Like the launch bay doors. And it's it's all right like i once again like i don't know how i feel about them having like a princess leia in here but it's all right um darth vader appears in this episode as i said before he is also pretty um i mean intimidating but i think what i believe hayden christensen alluded to is that this is the most powerful we have ever seen of vader and Finally, I'm so happy that we got to see Vader do something that really, in my mind, cemented him being the most powerful, which was him bringing down, like, a rebel cruiser, like, and just grabbing it down and with his with his own hand and the Force and, like, ripping it apart. That was out... That was incredible. I... I will say that Kumail Nanjiani reappeared in this season... in this episode... And I don't know how I feel about his character, too. Like, I think one of the issues I have with this show is that the characters themselves, I don't feel as much of a connection towards. I feel like the only characters I feel connected to are Obi-Wan and Darth Vader and even Reva. But, like, most of these other characters, I don't think the, the characters themselves are as, you know, gripping as say in the Mandalorian um, or even the animated series like Rebels and Clone Wars. These characters I just feel are you being used to move the story along. And I think that 
there, there are many things that this show I think um, um, doesn't do right and that is I think just the length I think this show is a, very strange to me I don't think this should have been a TV series I think this should have been a movie which I think it, or, it originally was supposed to be a movie I feel like the length of this show has felt all over the place and I feel like if they wanted to make this a TV series, it should have been longer than six episodes because I really feel like we haven't had enough time to sit with some of these characters, especially these rebel characters. Um, the character of Tala is in this episode and she has an emotional moment in the show, but I feel like even her character has only been with this show for a very small period of time and I think that this is something where if you want to really strengthen these characters and let us sit with them, give us more than six episodes. I'm excited for Andor because that will be 12 episodes and that is a show that they better not rush because that's a show that really I think needs that long 12 episode length. But this series, I don't know, like I don't, I, if they wanted to tell this story about Darth Vader going after Obi-Wan. They, I think they could have done it in like a two hour film. If they wanted to tell this story about, you know, Obi-Wan having to work with these rebels and protect Leia and that, I feel like that should have been a 12 episode series at least. Um, some of the direction in this show I thought was a bit wonky, especially this particular scene where stormtroopers are chasing and firing at these characters in a cave. It felt like the, it was too much shaky cam. It was kind of hard to focus on what was going on. Um, I also, I think that just sometimes the show feels a little cheap. Like, and we didn't get this from Mandalorian as much, but like this show, it, it does not feel like it is a theatrical film like Mandalorian or even some of the MCU shows. It it feels like a TV series. And once again, that's why I think that it would have been a better movie because it would have also felt like it was a, a movie. Um, but I did like what happened in this episode. I enjoyed some of the fights. Like there's a particular lightsaber battle with Darth Vader that I did like. But I think... Once again, though, this show is starting to show its cracks, and we only have one episode left, and I don't know how... I, I hope it's really good. I'm looking forward to it, but once again, I really expected a lot from this show, and I do feel like I'm a bit let down by this show. So let me know what you guys think. Um... Maybe you hated this episode. Maybe you really, really loved this episode. Let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.